what happens in your body and more specifically your gut when you avoid sugar for 30 days. And I'm here to talk to you about the no sugar challenges you are seeing on the internet. This video will explain what happens in your body when you cut out sugar for 30 days. I will provide insight into the science behind the effects of cutting sugar, particularly focusing on the gut health and the long-term benefits. Before we dive in, I should note that a 30-day challenge may not be suitable for everyone, especially those with disordered eating or diabetes. So what is so bad about sugar, you ask? Well, excessive sugar consumption leads to numerous health problems including obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease and more. Many people consume high amounts of added sugar daily, which can lead to long-term negative health impacts. The American Heart Association recommends limiting your daily sugar intake to no more than 36 grams, that is 90 spoons for men, and 25 grams, that is 60 spoons for women. These can be used as guidelines for a diet low in added sugars. Reducing added sugar specifically can help maintain a healthy weight, stabilize blood sugar levels, and reduce the risk of serious health conditions like type 2 diabetes and heart disease. I'll get into the specifics of what to include and avoid when approaching this challenge later on in this video, so please stay tuned. What is the 30-day no sugar challenge? The main goal is to cut out all sources of added sugar for 30 days. Instead, you focus on consuming nutrient-dense whole foods. Natural sugars which are found in foods like vegetables, fruits, and dairy products are okay to eat. Foods to avoid. While following a 30-day no sugar challenge, people are encouraged to restrict foods and beverages high in added sugars, including sweeteners like table sugar, honey, maple syrup, corn syrup, agave, and coconut sugar. Sweetened beverages such as sodas, juices, sweetened coffee drinks, and sports drinks. Condiments with added sugar such as ketchup, barbecue sauce, honey mustard, coffee creamer all have sneaky amounts of sugar. Sweetened dairy products such as flavored yogurt, ice cream, and chocolate milk. Sugary baked goods, for example, cookies, cakes, donuts, and bread with added sugar. Sugary breakfast foods such as sugar sweetened cereal, breakfast bars, granola, and flavored oatmeal. Candy like chocolate, gummy candies, and caramels. Sugary alcoholic beverages such as mixed drinks, sweetened liquor, sweetened canned alcoholic drinks. For this challenge, it might be a good idea to cut out alcoholic beverages entirely. It is also recommended that refined grains including white bread, pasta and rice be minimized and replaced with whole grain products without added sugar. Foods to eat During the 30-day no sugar challenge, focus on whole nutrient-dense foods including vegetables, for example, broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, carrots, asparagus, zucchini, and sweet potatoes in your diet. Fruits like apples, oranges, berries, grapes, cherries, and grapefruit. Proteins. Focus on eating proteins like chicken, fish, lean cuts of beef, tofu, and eggs. Healthy fat sources. For example, egg yolks, avocados, nuts, seeds, olive oil, and unsweetened yogurt. Complex carb sources. Beans, quinoa, sweet potatoes, and butternut squash. Unsweetened beverages such as water, sparkling water, unsweetened coffee, and tea. If you are looking for recipes with no added sugars, Healthline has a collection of delicious options. Be sure to check the description box for that link. Keep in mind that reducing your added sugar intake has no adverse physical health effects as long as you do so responsibly. Make balanced eating choices for the duration of the 30-day challenge. However, like any restrictive dietary pattern, some people may find that they develop an unhealthy preoccupation with food. People with disordered eating tendencies may be more likely to experience this. Here are some of the benefits of reducing added sugar in your diet. Reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. Sugar intake can contribute to insulin resistance and elevated blood sugar. Cutting back on added sugar can be a good way to reduce blood sugar and insulin levels 
even if you only do so for a short time period. Reduce body weight. Foods and beverages with a lot of added sugar tend to be high in calories and low in filling nutrients like protein and fiber. So a diet high in sugary foods has been linked to weight gain. Cutting out sources of added sugar may help you lose weight, especially when paired with a nutrient-dense diet and exercise. Improve gut health. Cutting sugar can help reduce inflammation and can therefore improve your gut microbiome. Improved oral health. Cutting sugar could also decrease the risk of cavities and tooth decay. Improved liver health. High sugar diets, especially high fructose diets, can contribute to fatty liver disease, so cutting sugar reduces your risk. Improved mood. Research suggests that sugar can be addictive, which is why reducing your sugar intake may lead to unpleasant symptoms in some people, like a grouchy mood, but over time, cutting sugar will help stabilize mood swings. Clearer skin. You might have a reduction in acne and red spots due to reduced inflammation. We talked about the upsides, but some downsides of a 30-day no sugar challenge is that it has potential for unhealthy obsessions with food or disordered eating tendencies. For some, this approach may trigger harmful behaviors or an unhealthy preoccupation with food rules. A 30-day challenge can provide insight into sugar intake habits, but the real health improvements come from making long-term, sustainable changes to your diet for longer than 30 days. For something like this to stick, aim for a diet that has a reduction in sugar and not an elimination outright. It is about moderation and not total restriction. Cutting out sugar for 30 days can have many benefits, including better control over blood sugar, weight loss, improved liver and heart health, and improved oral health. However, a sustainable approach to reducing sugar intake is key to maintaining long-term benefits. The real power lies in adopting a long-term, balanced diet that limits added sugar rather than focusing only on short-term challenges. So, how do you approach this challenge? Well, start reducing added sugar intake in a manageable way, rather than all at once. You can try having sugary deserts only on weekends, for example. Having an accountability buddy also helps. Remember, consult a dietitian before making drastic changes and talk to your doctor with questions. So what are your experiences with cutting sugar? Let me know in the comments and subscribe for more gut health tips like this. See you next time.